bet horse racing on DRF Bets. We'll match your first deposit of $200. Get free expert picks and past performances, plus weekly cash back. All from Daily Racing Form, the most trusted name in horse racing. Hi, everybody. Dan Ullman, Mike Beer for Breeders' Cup Focus. In this edition, we'll focus on the top contenders for the Breeders' Cup turf. Pre-entries are out, which means pre-entry past performances are out at drf.com. Check out all of the latest Breeders' Cup news at drf.com slash bc. Let's take a look at the top 10 list for the Breeders' Cup turf as ranked by preliminary morning line odds maker Brad Free. And it looks like a dolphin has this field over a barrel, at least from the morning line. Rebels Romance, Nation's Pride, both trained by Charlie Appleby, both taking two distinctly different paths to the Breeders' Cup turf. Yeah, and the Nation's Pride, the three-year-old, um, will be taking on some older horses uh, at, on Breeders' Cup Day. Uh, listen, you know, we're used to seeing Godolphin and, and Charlie Appleby come over with really strong contenders in our grade one turf races. They tend to win their share of them. Uh, Rebels Romance, the morning line favorite, at least the early morning line favorite, going to come into this race on a real roll since switching to turf. He's won 8 of 11 in his career. He was a good dirt horse who won the UAE Derby at 3. He has now won four consecutive races on the turf, two group ones in Germany, including this race last time out, the Pre von Europa, back on September the 25th. And Rebels Romance likes a fight. He likes distance. And in a year where maybe the North American turf horses lack that pizzazz, uh, he's coming into this race in very good form for a trainer that wins a ton of races. Yeah, I think that's what you you know like about uh, his chances, maybe more than anything else. Not that he isn't a good horse anyway, but he's going to come over here um, and take on some American-based horses who, you know, frankly, Dan, just aren't that good. There's nobody to be afraid of. This horse has won all four of his turf starts. They're all um, at a mile and a half. The last two are group one races. He's not you know, blowing these fields away, but uh, he's getting the job done. He's going to come into this in great form and maybe just face the right kind of field. While Rebels Romance comes in from Germany, Nation's Pride has been campaigning in the U.S. of A against fellow three-year-olds. Two graded stakes wins in a row. Let's watch his most recent start. They had to test him at a mile and a half. They did in the Jockey Club Derby, and he was much the best at odds on. It's going to be a much tougher task class-wise in the Breeders' Cup yeah, he's going to absolutely he's going to have to probably up his game if he's going to win there. But this is obviously a really impressive win. If nothing else, Dan, you see here that the mile and a half is no problem for this horse. He's not beating the strongest group of three year olds there, but he absolutely dusted them. His prior effort was also very strong um, winning up at Saratoga. And the only time that uh, he's lost since he's arrived stateside was off of a really tough trip in the Belmont Derby. The best longer distance turf force in North America, any sex, is warlike goddess. She's a mare taking on the boys. She's in this race because of the distance. She would run in the Philly and mare turf, but at Keeneland, it's a little bit shorter than what warlike goddess wants to go. So she'll take on the boys here at a mile and a half, much as she did last time out in the Joe Hirsch Turf Classic, and she ran a career best race. Uh, yeah, wins this race very easily, kept a little bit closer to the pace this time after, you know, sort of her trip uh, blew up in her face, two starts back in the Flower Bowl. So they didn't really take any chances here, kept her within range, and she just easily handles this group of Colts. Um, you know, I'm, I'm assuming when they go to Breeders' Cup, she's going to um, give a good account of herself. I do think it's going to be a, a tougher race for her, Dan, but she's really, really good. There are no bad races on her card. You're not seeing it wrong in your DRF pre-entry pass performances. Mishriff has earned over $15 million in his career, thanks to a win in the Saudi Cup, a win in the Dubai Shima Classic, a win in the Judmont International. Now, all of those races were in 2021. What do you think of his form this year? He was a big price in the arc. He didn't do much running. Maybe it was the soft turf? Yeah, it feels like that's a, a viable excuse for his arc performance. Was It just wasn't very good, but I, I feel like he may not act over soft ground. His race two back was also over softer ground, and that wasn't you know a top-level performance for him either. Um, so maybe getting over here, getting a little bit firmer footing underneath him, um, I think that could go a long way to improving his chances. You know, is he as good this year as he was last year? I mean, I guess that's you know open to interpretation, Dan, but he's a really, really good horse, and he might be dirtied up. Let's take a look at 6 through 10 while discussing Bye Bye Melvin, who got loose in the Joe Hirsch Turf uh, Classic, but was run down by Warlike Goddess. You would have thought that might have been his best chance, Mike, to nab a grade one loose on the lead in a slow-paced race. 
Uh, yeah, absolutely. And he, he ran very well in there. He's come back in really good form this year off of an extended layoff uh, for trainer Graham Motion. Um, and maybe he has one more forward move in him, Dan. But I think you're right. If he was going to take down, you know, a significant grade one last time might have been the time. And he's got more like goddess to deal with again, among others. I know you've always been a fan of Highland Chief. He's had a pretty good year. He's coming off of a perfect trip win last time out, but he is in good form. I think we have not seen his best. Yeah, I mean, it, if nothing else, I guess you would say that the mile and a half, it, you know, really suits this horse. It's probably his best distance, and he did just win that, you know, Sycamore over the mile and a half. His form, overall form is good. He's run some really nice races. Um, I think it'll be tough for him um, come Breeders' Cup Day, but I don't think he's impossible. Virginia Joy is cross-centered in the Philly and Mare turf. Her big moment came when she wired Warlike Goddess on a glacial pace. I have a feeling she's going to run in the Philly and Mare turf, but if she runs here, she's going to be part of the pace with Bye Bye Melvin, likely much faster than when she wired uh, Warlike Goddess. Uh, again, Breeders' Cup pre-entries uh, are available. Breeders' Cup pre-entry past performances are available at drf.com. Right now, the Europeans look tough, but you can never overlook a mare like Warlike Goddess, a horse that just closes and fires every single time. 